Hiya. How's everybody today? So far, so good. <laughs> far, so good. Right. Yeah. We still have Yuadi, but she should be joining us today. And uh, yeah, we have all of us back. Any news since yesterday? Any big things before some other people come? No? For Uneventful, me, which is good. <laughs> on a, for me, I, I uh, went into those Seesaw Connects, I'll probably mention it again, and tried uh, one and a half way, ways through the co uh, courses. And the one that I did was the gamification one. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty cool. There were lots of little things like, oh, wow, okay, I never thought about all those. And so I, I recommend that one. I'll, I'll show a couple things um, that I learned from that. And so I hope that the other courses are that good. Did anybody else try any yet? I did the the family one, the connect with family one. Um, and even though I felt like I knew like kind of the gamification, it was like little stuff. Where I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And she's got a lot of good stuff in there for like beginning of the school year if you're online and stuff like that. So how do you make sure you get all your parents connected? And there was a quite a bit in there about the translation and uh, ELL students. So that's it was pretty cool. good. Okay. <laughs> They're all good though, right? <laughs> <laughs> There, I'm sure that there's going to be some duds, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Think about when you take courses of 10 courses, there's always that one or sometimes two where you're like, oh man, that was a waste of my time. <laughs> I didn't get anything out of it. <laughs> and then the other ones where you go, oh my gosh, every right. gold. <laughs> uh, 6.02, I, I think I will start at 6.03 today again, just to uh, give people a little bit of time. And pizza. Sabadi mai? Kap. Sabadi ka. You can be my crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing while we're uh, just mentioning stuff, uh, I went through the, the CISA Connect uh, Google Doc mm -hmm. and updated a lot. And I'll, I'll show some things that I, I added to it. I just added all my thoughts, and they're just my thoughts. But uh, if other people want to put in uh, their own thoughts uh, it's from yesterday's meeting, please add to it. This is not my document. This is our document. So. Yeah, it looks really good. I had a look earlier. Oh, thank you. So, ooh. And uh, Hannah, oh my goodness, how many activities have you got in the community? Yeah, we saw the show. It makes me feel really bad. I would say, oh my goodness, I never put anything in. So it's been quite inspiring. It's <laughs> good. Yeah, I quite like I quite like the challenge of mm. trying to get them there. But there's so many good stuff there. But it's um yeah, that community library is a life saver. It really is. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with with my last school, uh, I submitted a whole bunch near the end of the year because I wanted to have them for moving to another school. And then I, I haven't seen that they've gone through yet because that was right when uh, uh, COVID was happening. So once you started submitting Hannah, did they just start automatically going through for you or how long did it take? Because I think- sometimes, sometimes it takes a while and then I submit a lot and then suddenly nothing. And then I get like ping, 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 approved, 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 so. Oh. Um, it can take a while and then I think I think many get submitted because they stopped it for a long period mm -hmm. of time over COVID you couldn't submit anything I right. think they have too many too many things being submitted I want I need to that is talking about this reminds me I want to go back and ask about all of them because I created a whole digital citizenship curriculum mm -hmm. that was awesome. but but in order to keep it I had to submit them all online so that I can see them again. <laughs> I don't see any of them now. So I yeah. did hear that they were like Hannah said, they stopped for a while and then they're like really behind because they like they check those in person. Right. And so it may just be that it's taking a really long time. Yeah, I, I, I bet that everybody all of a sudden is is starting to, you know, <laughs> proven people like Miss Hannah. Right. <laughs> oh, we know hers are good. <laughs> And by the way, so what Jenna and, and uh, I are talking about is in the notes uh, down on uh, page uh, four, 
I did a shout out to Hannah and to you, Jenna, uh, and it just links to Hannah's activities that she's she's put online. And to Jenna, uh, she put uh, a whole bunch of like things that teachers and parents and uh, educators should think about when they're doing. Uh, it was a blog post for your school, right? It was on the website. I popped in another one because I did one when we kind of launched home learning the first time. And it was all about, it was actually all about Seesaw. Right. Um, and that was following on from that. It was like, I don't know, managing children online, really. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I see that new one that you put in there. So anything that I put, that, anything that I put in is purple. Uh, and then all the other stuff was stuff that was there before. So I just thought, I'll codify mm -hmm. it a bit. So you go, what did he read? <laughs> is it all purple? Uh, yeah. Hi, Miss Nung. Somebody my cop? Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, let's let's get started. I'm gonna go. Uh, if it's okay, I'm gonna share a screen just for a minute, and then uh, then we'll come back. So let me just uh, share my screen. Figure this out again. Here we are. Uh, and you can see here. So uh, when we're looking at this, uh, I don't know if you know this, but if you click on here, then you can just actually jump down to our next meeting. And we will use uh, this for the icebreaker maybe for a second, maybe we won't. And you can see all of the items that I did put in here. Uh, just some think things probably that you've seen. Hopefully everybody knows about enabling student comments, but it just kind of followed up with yesterday. Um, and then uh, some other stuff about Errol. And this was interesting that I saw. This was uh, John John Mick, John Whit Mitkins. He's out of Europe. Uh, and he had posted this on uh, Twitter. And I thought it was really interesting. And so I kind of grabbed a screenshot. But he got that from somewhere else. And it's just all the things that you need to have in place. Otherwise, you're going to be missing something. Uh, and it's for a plan, basically. And so you'll have success if you have vision, skills, incentives, resources, and action plan all together. So those were some things. Um, and then these are links in here. And these links were from uh, about distance learning. I thought that they were really helpful. I found these before, but they're really uh, good. You can click on those if they're underlined, they're links. Okay. And then down near the bottom, um, sorry, accepting these engaging teacher stuff. Most of this stuff here, was stuff that I just got from the course that I took today. So if you start taking that course about uh, about gamification, then you're gonna see, uh, oh, he stole all that from that course. So I'm attributing it now. <laughs> I should put it somewhere else in there, but it was great. Just uh, some things that you can use in conjunction. I knew Prodigy really well, we've used Manga High before, but then some of these other things were, were new to me, some ELL, uh, ELA uh, resources. And then I've used Kahoot before, uh, I started trying the quiz eyes today and I like it. It's uh, amazing. Yeah, because you have the ability for short answer or long answers in there too. So I really like that one. And then just ways that they can do tracking and lots of different things that I just never really thought about. And I guess it goes somewhat against uh, the, the uh, Daniel Pink drive theories, but some things maybe you can use uh, if you kind of adapt it and maybe uh, make it more spontaneous rather than people are just, students are just working towards badges or things like that. Okay, uh, duh, 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 duh. here we are. Today, uh, we have three more chats. Today's including one. And we remember that we've got one next week on Monday. And then our fourth one we agreed was on September 20th. And that would be again at 6 p.m. Today, uh, we thought we, we would schedule for 30 minutes, but yesterday we went an hour and we actually were going over an hour. So uh, okay. I thought we could plan for about an hour again today, if that's okay. Of course, if you need to jump out early, <laughs> no worries, that makes sense. You were only really planning for a half, a half an hour, but uh, I, in my mind, I'm gonna go an hour and anybody that wants to stick around. Um, I did share the recordings yesterday with ARC because nobody wrote back to me and said that they didn't want that. And then uh, Yuwedi actually asked if I could share with her as well. So I just thought I'd mention that I shared the meeting yesterday or today with them. And so the recordings. Um, again, our meeting notes have been updated. And then this is something that I want to point out and say it out loud. 
because it's something that you can hold me to as well. And I don't know, I remember it was Marina Gaijin at my last school. She was the principal a few years ago. And she was talking about, because we're a mix of so many cultures, that uh, often we, uh, as in uh, Westerners, speak too much, <laughs> or we speak a lot. And uh, whereas Asian uh, culture is a lot, a lot more um, receptive. And so to be, be, be mindful about that and that we are not, and, and when I keep saying we, I, I'm, I'm thinking as Westerners are not uh, dominating the conversation. And so with that said, I'm going to try to speak less and uh, hopefully uh, everybody will get equal talking. <laughs> Any other um things to talk about or think about before we get into our icebreaker for today. Okay, we're gonna get right into our icebreaker then. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> for our icebreaker today, you're going to find a meme or a GIF <laughs> that describes your connection to the Seesaw community, okay? So it could be something about being pioneers or ambassadors or certified educators and or what brought you to join the CSAC community. You'll have one minute to find this GIF or GIF and each person can share. And I was thinking the easiest way to share might be to actually go into uh, here in our Google Doc, jump down here and then just post your GIF in there and then we can see it and we don't have to keep sharing screen and going back and forth. Uh, do we have can a question? Just, yeah, can you just share the link with me again for the doc, document, please? For sure, I'm gonna share that now. Let me just get that, get link, copy link. I'm gonna put that into our chat. Stop sharing this, go into the chat. And Thank you. here we are. Please test it and see that it works. Hi, Ark. Hey, I'm sorry for being late. No worries. I have to uh, take marks off you though. But, uh, oh, <laughs> you just what? <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. so that's Man. there. A meme or a gif or anything that uh, represents uh, how you got into or became associated with Seesaw. So, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> Heidi. It jumped out at me. <laughs> it did, did it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just put that They tell me everything. And do you pronounce it Jeff or Gif? <laughs> I say Gif, but I've heard yes. it's Jeff. But I it's like, like <laughs> it's graphic. I don't know. It's graphic so something, something. So I think it's graph. I think it's Gif. It's graphic something. I don't know. I, I remember a uh, university professor back for my first undergrad, uh, and they had a big thing about it. And they said, it's GIF. And I, from that moment forward, I called it GIF. And I was so sure about it, it was GIF, GIF, GIF. And I corrected many teachers and many people. 
And then I finally did some research on it. And mm -hmm. the person who designed it, the what it actually is, he calls it a GIF. <laughs> so if, if he's the person who invented it, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> My professor was wrong from many, many years ago. Okay, Mary has hers. Arc is still maybe. Arc, uh, we're putting that, our, uh, our memes into our <laughs> Seesaw Connect uh, in, in yes. the doc. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Okay. Let's try this one. Uh, Mine is so not fun. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm ready. Tell me everything. Education is full of up and ups and downs. Use the CISA app to keep up. Look at all this work I haven't done yet. <laughs> uh huh. You want to know? Oh, yes, from the Matrix. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I want to be unplugged. <laughs> Did anybody want to talk about theirs while we're before we move on? Uh, I, I thought I would I would mention mine for a second. Mine uh, is up at the top. Is the the Davis Technology Acceptance Model? So not funny, um, but I when I was a tech coach or tech integrator before I was a tech coach. Uh, I used to look at everything through the uh, perspective of, is it useful and is it easy to use? And if a technology was, then usually it would get, you know, people would start using it. And when I first found out about Seesaw, uh, I was just like, oh my gosh, so easy to use and so useful. And so that's why back in 2015, I started just telling everybody, you got to try this out. And people were like, wow, yeah. Um, I'm excited. And then, Art, do, do you, when you say, do you want to know, or when uh, your GIF, GIF says that, uh, yeah. what, what do you well, mean by that one? Um, it's like somebody kind of like, uh, you know, uh, invited me. It actually, not just Seesaw, but, you know, in terms of like integrating technology or knowing about technology, what to use for education. Um, I put this because it's it's a choice for me. It's a choice. Like, do you want to know? And if you want to know, then, you know, um, involve yourself or commit yourself and, and, you know, join and then go and then just see what, what you can learn about. And so I, I it's like, I, I refer to like the matrix because I, I'm kind of like, uh, you know, a science fiction guy. And when, when I, you know, um, watch the matrix, it's kind of like unplugging yourself so that you can see the real truth, the real mm -hmm. things or the real, uh, world. What's, what's really happening around the world and what's the really good. Health. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, Hannah, <laughs> you got you got a, a animated. It's a system. What what do you mean by that, Hannah? Um, for me, I just love the fact that kids can they can write, they can draw, they can speak. You know, I'm speaking second language learners. It's so important that they can speak and I can speak to them. Mm. Um, and it just it's been amazing for my lower level students. They've mm. absolutely loved it, and actually. I would say a lot of my lower level students are no longer lower level. And I think Seesaw has a massive part in that because they get to do everything in the safety of their own home by themselves, practice, record, and then that feedback as well. And ah. just their confidence goes up as well. So I've just been 
yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Seesaw fan. I kind of annoy people at my work about it, but I've seen the results. So the results in my students have just been pretty cool. Yeah. I wish that I wish that Seesaw had the option to create a, vo a voice recording uh, feedback in the comments on a laptop because it doesn't seem to have that on the laptop. If you're using the iPad, you can. Yeah, it does. It, yeah, you can. In the comments. Yeah. No, I've had really. You use the Mac. The Mac. Like, on one, don't you? Okay. I'm going to go check again. <laughs> there's, any, there's one thing I wish, because I started using a bit of Flipgrid, which I yeah. linked through Seesaw, is the uh, mixtape. So I wish there was something where you could do like a mixtape so the kids can all see each other on one mm. screen. That would be then, then I wouldn't have to even use Flipgrid, if you know what I mean. The mixtape right. is great, yeah. yeah. Uh, kun nung. Did you want to explain yours a little bit? And I, oh, there you are. I'm sorry, just like my dog is barking a lot today. So, oh, sorry. Um, uh, I feel like um, when I know the seesaw, it just like changed my style of uh, teaching. And it seems like um, this just sort of like has me from the age and see everything and, and transform myself to it. That makes sense. Yeah, the you're hatching and coming out and learning so many new things and, and enabling everybody to be able to do that as well. Jenna. Tell you everything. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think as well. Um, for for me being in a very sort of newish school, there might not be many people in you know the staff that like um, know see sort of that interested. So it's like finding people that like you can connect with and learn from, and then take back to school. Um, you know to share with others as well so yeah I think that's it because when when we started Seesaw I don't think anyone had used it before gosh whenever it was well we actually started oh gosh I can't even remember it was before it was before um Covid but not that long before so the learning curve was incredibly steep so yeah it's just like tell me everything I want to know everything I want to learn everything right uh Pampicha, what are you so excited about? So, like, like Han, um, Jenna said before, so I used to work in the Shushri Riverside before, right? So we used Seesaw sometimes, but not like that much this, for these three years. So before that, I thought I, I know something in Seesaw, but when I start connect with the Seesaw Connect and take some course, it's like open world. Like I didn't know that I can do something like this in the seesaw and it's helped much with the learning and we can do grading as well mm. at the same time, not just like ass ass assessment, the children easily and we can keep the student profile together so they can share with each other. So everything in the course is so excited for me. So I didn't know something that we can do in the seesaw before, but when we get the course, it's like, Help me a lot, and then I feel excited to express my knowledge to my team as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> and Miss Heidi, that yeah. yours is like an inception, and what I, and what I mean by that is education is full of ups and downs, and CISA is like ups and downs. I just realized that the logo just two days ago it is a CISA. <laughs> if you look at it, it's the moving seas. I just realized that I've been using seas since 2015. <laughs> I've looked at the logo. I've got t-shirts with it and everything. And I just looked at it. I'm like, that's amazing. Oh my god, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> just like, look at it again. You're like, oh, out of like, everything. Oh, I knew that all the time. You did. 
Uh, anyway, uh, maybe maybe you didn't know that before, but yeah, now you can look at it again and go, oh, okay, that's something I learned. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And Mary, all the work you haven't done. Yeah, I guess it, it kind of sums up, you know, what it was like coming into um, a new school. Um, the term was already almost finished. You know, there's just, you know what it's like in, um, you know, when you start in a new school and it's just, you're just bombarded with so much stuff. And um, the school was really um, big on seesaw. And um, so they have these teams that we all have to be, you know, you choose, you can go into. So I chose seesaw thinking, okay, I've got to use this in my classroom. I think the best way of um, getting stuck in is to be part of the team that was sort of looking at how the school could use seesaw better. So, but it did feel very much like seesaw was part of that whole, you know, just everything kind of, you know, hitting you all at once. But it's probably for me been the one thing that has, um, you know, I, I felt like I've really grown with and has been hugely, hugely helpful in the classroom. But yeah, that kind of just sums up that whole, oh my goodness, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been teaching or what roles you've done, you walk into a new school and it's just like, you know, where do you start and and, and how, do you, how do you get your head around everything really quickly? Great, yeah. And it almost leads into uh, the, the newest, not the newest, or one of the newer updates, which is progress, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't know about you guys, uh, but I've. I used to do that digitally by hand, <laughs> and I would do it for the whole school. Oh no! I would, I would look through everybody's and give the progress because we went in, in, online back in March last year for China, and I did everything on an Excel spreadsheet. So when progress came out, I was just like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> you can see if it's still in draft, and you can see if a teacher has responded. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> So just looking down, uh, thank you everybody for uh, submitting some things. Uh, down on uh, the top of page 11, some of the keynotes that uh, were I brought from above from our last meeting, I just put in as check boxes that we could kind of attend to them because I thought that they were things that we should bring forward before or while we're, oopsie. Okay, it's on page 10 now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay uh so th these were some of the notes that i thought that we would want to just keep at the top of our mind uh about what we had mentioned yesterday and the first one was the ideas about helping to bridge the gap between new students and, and user veterans so i had put in some notes above um and maybe some other people want to talk about that first or we could look at what i had written and i had just written uh about that we would that right oh that we might uh bring in partners trios and groups to help help learners like uh, the veterans would help new kids we might have a repository website with key learnings videos and ways to interact you might have student led or student developed reviews of everything uh, plus then add new uh, learning instances, and you might have anchor charts. And so uh, I can show you how we build anchor charts just into a simple post uh, that's on Seesaw. And so you have anchor charts normally in your classroom, but if you're online, you can just throw them up there too. And so those were some things that we had uh, done. Did anybody else have other things that were ideas to help bridge the gap from old and new students? I usually do the buddy system. Uh, if there's anybody and I find like the kids are it's super intuitive and they catch on super quick like you kind of have to as teachers you spend more time working with other teachers that are new as opposed to students so the buddy system has always worked really well with me it's usually teachers and families where you need to like help them out I agree <laughs> uh, anyone else okay Ideas for long-term activities, uh, helpful logistics for activities that span multiple days. Does anybody, of course we've, we've maybe most of us have done this now. Um, one, one tidbit that I would give as feedback, especially for the younger kids, is in when I create an activity, I try not to make it too many slides. Mm -hmm. because when it's too many slides in, the kids don't get quick and easy wins. 
So now, even though we have that capability, I break apart activities into mostly just one slide because then the kids are like, yes, 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 done. And they feel like they've accomplished something. So it's a little bit more work for me, but uh, I find that kids, you, you might be going back, especially if I feel like working in three, four or whatever, and going, you didn't go to slide three. It's like, oh, I've done it. And it's like, oh. So I break it apart and slide three, I put into a new activity for longer types of things. And also, I, I also find that it's really hard to say, refer back to, because these kids are on iPads, right? And so for them to open multiple tabs or, or be working like dual screen or something like that is often, it, it can't be expected. <clears throat> and we can't pull something up for them sometimes for them to refer back to things. So just thinking about that, that's not how or, or what kinds of planning for or, or things to do, but more things not to do in making long-term things. Um, I usually worked outside of CESA for long-term things. And what I mean by that is through Google Docs. So I'll have a long, here, go through this. Here's the next bit, here's the next bit. And they can refer back to it. And they might post post, post things into CESA that's a link through, through the Google Doc. But that's how I would uh, manage longer-term things so they can keep up. Okay. Uh, track of it better. Other people? Is it okay Maybe if I like go choice board okay. and things? Yeah. Sorry, Heidi. No, no, go go right ahead. I'm like, I don't want to keep talking. Yeah, <laughs> I really like um choice boards. Mm. Um, because often, like, say, like we don't teach our like proper full timetable. So, um, whereas I might. Um, have two topic lessons a week now we have one but we give the children a week to complete this task and um, so they can sort of like dip in and out with some reminders and things but I think they're really really nice yeah sometimes I, I'll do like um levels so at the end once they've completed a task there's a bit of a mini exit ticket and it's like are you ready to level up to the next part and they kind of quite like that making it into a game even though it's not a game just putting a kind of graphic on there and saying okay move on to level two once you've completed everything yeah and they kind of enjoy that for me i have a checklist i give them the checklist first like for the long-term project so like a week we have to finish like two things so they know already that this week just only these two things and when we move to the next week they already know like we have to compare the last week work to finish the next week work so something like that so don't give them like much work to do so we just do bit by bit with the checklist yeah I kind of do like a hybrid. We do like a checklist like that. I have it in Google Slides and it's mm -hmm. like published so that the parents can also see it and all the links click to the Seesaw activities to make everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I've done with um, like kind of bigger projects, I love the idea of one slide, but sometimes for me, it doesn't work. So, because mm -hmm. in Seesaw, when you make an activity, you can link to a specific slide in the activity. So like we did the science thing where it was like growing plants they were supposed to measure it and graph it and all of that and it was a 10-day project so the very first slide it just said day one day two day three and when they clicked it it popped them to the right part of the activity mm -hmm. and what they did for the day was just one thing so they took a picture they wrote about what they saw and then there was a click that would take them to the graph that they had to fill out for the day so if you do want to use it for more than one day you can still kind of keep it pretty streamlined maybe not for the younger kids but i'm in fourth so they it was they were like oh clickety click click they can figure it out so that's one way if you do want to keep it complicated you can still keep it you know organized mm -hmm. all in one place and i like when you're approving stuff i mean i wouldn't be doing it at the beginning of the year but towards the end of the year when they know their work's not been approved it makes them go back and they actually are like what why why and it makes them really good at checking their work looking for my feedback which is something which they wouldn't do in the classroom in the classroom they'd probably just get it back and put it in their desk or something and I like it becomes a bit of a game like why why is it not being approved and where is the comment or something so they kind of it turns into a bit of a game which is great yeah 
Um, Did anyone have any problems with that? Like um, towards the end of the term, because obviously everyone was fatigued, but there were a couple of children that would like just send then, activities. Mm. They'd sent and like not even done anything at all. Mm. And um, so he'd send them back saying, you know, <laughs> you know, you need to do this. And eventually I just started deleting the things that they yeah. sent. So it didn't, I, they didn't even get the reminder. Did any mm. this happen anywhere else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. And, and, and <laughs> not alone. I, I would. I would uh, probably assert that the reason that was happening was maybe because all of a sudden you had had a talk with mom, and she was sitting over top and and going, "Okay, I want to see that the activities are gone," and so then now Johnny is the kid I always use because I don't know any Johnnies in my class. Johnny has uh, <laughs> gone through and done all that. And it's like, I'm done, Mom. Now I can go up and play Roblox, right? And it's like, yeah, okay. Yes. And it's like, oh, oh Roblox. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. and, but with that, the thing that I would add on is, especially the, the younger the kids are or the more uh, not ready cognitively, is be wary about how much you do the send back feature. Uh, because mm. it does, it's it's uh, defeating, right? Mm. And I, I just think about that not only from a student point of view, but from my son's point of view. And uh, he was getting things back, and it's like I did this already. And so you want to think about what if if they've done something and you've sent it back and have kind of tweaked it and changed it a bit, then maybe, especially maybe three grade three and younger, I would not send it back too much or you know, judge that student to mm. go, okay, because otherwise you're losing them, especially mm. with this online learning only where you can't sit beside them and go, here, look, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Um, what I would also do is if I wanted to give a lot of feedback and I had only used one slide as the activity is I would make a copy of the slide. Mm. Now I have two slides, right? And in the first slide, is where I would go in and give all the feedback through a video. Mm. And mm -hmm. so the video is there and it's like, see now here, da, da, da. now on the second slide, I've made a copy and I want you to do this. Mm. And so that was one way that I would give feedback, especially for like complex math things and stuff like that. Uh, so make a copy and then give the video feedback. Let them see exactly where their mistakes are. So they can see their mistakes are still there, but you're showing why they made that mistake. So that was one thing that I would do. It was really handy. As, um, mass is a good example. Like if you were giving feedback on something that lots of the children hadn't got correct and you can just post to post to journal. So it goes to all of them, but not as an activity, um, but just as, I don't know, it just appears, but they can all see it. And that I found that really useful as well. Ooh, who was the uh, person yesterday who wrote all the notes and stuff? Was that Heidi? The notes? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Somebody was taking notes yesterday at, at the top and then moved them Emily, on. Emily, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> the one that's not here taking notes now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are you on okay. your own, Thomas? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, any others? If not, let's move down to the next point. Um, Talking about and maybe creating a parent resource ideas for helping parents to support their child's use of, of CISA in effective and ethical ways. And I put a link above and it's, it's actually a link to uh, my old blog that I haven't updated in a long time. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. On slide two, there was a link, no. No, it wasn't there. Does anybody see where what I was talking about? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I had put two links. It was the links to uh, to Jenna's things, and uh, so I thought that that was a really comprehensive uh, resource there. Uh, oh, that, thank you. And Jenna has added uh, another link. That I haven't looked at yet. 
And, and Jenna, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Um, yeah, we had, um, well, when we introduced Seesaw, we wanted to just share with parents what it was, how it was used, um, so that they could like see why we had chosen this tool and like how we could use this tool. And this was back when Seesaw was quite, well, the features were much more limited than now, but it was just to give um, parents confidence in home learning. Um, so they understood that we had like the child's best interest in like learning at heart. And then on the back of that as well, because um, my role was um, um, digital lead. So we also had um, a, like had a big involvement in like um, how the e-safety sort of side of things and like sharing that with parents. So they could know how to support their child at home with even things like screen time, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there were other things on the parent portal as well on Firefly we use, but yeah, just just to give keep parents up to date, really. Yeah. Oh, those are those are worth uh, checking out. Those two links, perusing them, really digging deep into those because uh, they are fantastic. Um, if other people have links like that and they want to add them in, please do so just added a link I took that course yesterday so I put a link to my notes from that okay but um you can get that if you take the course too which one is this Heidi uh it's the I can't remember the exact name if you go to Seesaw Connect it's the Connecting with Families course mm. by Paula Ott OTT great and these are your notes from there yeah, like, you know how they give you like links to resources and things like that. So I just keep them all in a doc so I can find it quickly. So if you open that, it's just links to YouTube videos, Seesaw tutorials, and just like handy little things if you don't want to go through the whole course. It's like Great. overview. Thank you. The, the goals are Cliff's notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Digital Cliff notes. Uh -huh. Okay. Engaging teachers in using Seesaw for authentic purposes. For authentic purposes. That's, that's the key, right? It's like, how, how are we making this authentic? And what's, what's inauthentic learning? Or disauthentic learning, is that the word? <laughs> I didn't write that. I, I copied that down. Uh, somebody had said that they wanted to learn that or wanted to talk about that. Can anybody think of an example where it was a fantastic project or a fantastic simple activity that you did that was so authentic that you wanted to share with someone, with us? I think I've... Um... There's lots of great tools and things um, out there that you can um, use for uh, making learning authentic. There's lots of, I mean, it just every five minutes there's something new and something fabulous that you can use. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's like, how can, you know, it was sort of something I said yesterday, um, without having to always be linking out, how, you know, I guess that's my big question is, making sure that um, Seesaw becomes more than just a place where I sort of dump stuff for kids to do and then they, they, they put it in there, like what else can I use it for? And I'm, I'm sort of probably unlike everybody else here, I'm probably I'm maybe a little bit earlier in my journey um, in terms of using Seesaw. So, and I'm very impatient. So I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get as much of a, a head start on it as I can um, and, and just trying to, I don't know, think a bit really inventive ways of using it. So, for example, we were doing a unit on World War II and it was very, very dry and I reinvented it a wee bit and um, I got the kids that had done a, a research on um, uh, Japan's invasion into China and then into Brunei and, um, you know, the impact it had on Brunei um, in World War II. And rather than just having the kids read some stuff and do some activities, I actually got them, we used Audacity and they recorded themselves um, 
mm. doing a, a broadcast. So they chose one of the events and all of the studies that we'd done across World II, whether it was the invasion of Brunei or, or one of the other major events that they had studied during this unit. And then they wrote a one minute script and using Audacity, which changed their voices slightly and put all that 1940s crackle in. Um, and, and they broadcast uh, a one minute as if this event was actually happening right now, which was really, really amazing. And um, I think the only way I could get that to publish in Seesaw was by putting a, a link to it um, rather than being able to. So I, I guess what I'm saying is sort of like, Sometimes I think, I mean, Cecil can't do everything, but how can we use those those really great moments and put it into Cecil so that people aren't having to click out, click out, click out, that mm. kind of thing as well. <clears throat> mm. um, maybe when we do a little bit of a share later, uh, maybe a show and tell, uh, I'll show you, uh, maybe other people are doing this, a few other ways that we use Cecil, that I've used Cecil more than just a repository. Um, and I bet that other people have some cool things too. Uh, and, oh, it jumps to the next one, kind of. <laughs> the time for sharing our uses of CISA. Did anybody want to screen share and show how they are using it in their class and do a little quick talk through? I, I could start, or if somebody else wants to. I'm, I'm not going to be... Um... A slacker, but um, my stuff has now all been um, archived for this year, so I've actually got yeah. nothing to show. You, <laughs> so you, I've got a, I've got a, a clean slate at the moment. Okay, as a teacher, you are able to unarchive. Uh, you have the ability. I, I, I can uh, possibly show you that as well. Yeah. I, I just don't want to get in trouble. Because <laughs> okay. I've got in, my new classes all set up, ready to go, so I don't want to muck up their systems. But no, sure. Uh, then I'll just show three little things that we do at my school or that I do in my class uh, mm -hmm. and then maybe other people so give some ideas or you know make them go I want to show mine now because I'm way better than you Tom. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, just jumping over to an archived class that I had as well. Uh, one of the things that we always use is and I loved when they came up with this was the pinned activities mm -hmm. and so our pinned activities kind of our message board and what we would do every day is add in just a new little picture and kids would have to figure out what it was. And so that was just kind of a fun thing while they're waiting around, finding what it's almost a where's Waldo. Plus the announcements would be there every day. Mm -hmm. They were able to go in, they would see what the schedule was for the day on their, that slide. And then they could see their responsibilities, what they actually had to do and the possibilities for the day. So for the kids that are just bored at home, we gave them lots and lots of possibilities and they were linked to each of them. Um, we would have shout outs at the end of every week for things that kids did. So the teachers would get, get together and be like, hey, you know what, you know, oh, Kem has done this, Mickey's done that, great, great, great. So we'd just give quick shout outs. And I'm almost thinking that this year, I, I'd like to start just giving badges, but they're not uh, badges that they would work to. They'd be badges that are much more, uh, not haphazard, but more uh, are us choosing them rather than them going, I did 50 things, where's my badge? Not that type of badge. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the links to all of the Zoom link, Zoom uh, classes for each kid. Mm -hmm. And then major things for like, this is a video for how they would uh, do the split screen if they want to play a Kahoot on only one device and how to play Prodigy and get into towers and stuff. I don't know if anybody knows about that, but kids, if you're using Prodigy, it's a fantastic app. But uh, a quick thing about that is the kids can get in there and just start playing with avatars and building things and buying things. And they're not doing math. And so I had this thing with my, my son. I, he said, I played Prodigy for an hour and I looked and his screen time said he did. <laughs> then I looked at in the behind the scenes and it, he'd only answered like three questions. I'm like, so they might be doing Prodigy, but they're not doing math. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we were doing was in our folders, as I had mentioned earlier, we had anchor charts. And so we would put like Story Mountain or mm. our pups. Uh, this was our design thinking because we have like the 20% time or we call it explore. So this is the checklist of here's how you research, here's how you empathize, brainstorm. And this actually takes half a year. So they're going through this whole thing with they have to choose 10 research methods and choose two ways that they're going to empathize and three of these. This is something that I built. Um, and then writing stories, different ways that they can uh, choose to be. Uh, that, that was on their free time stuff. 
these were oh, silent levels and whatnot. <laughs> and then uh, this is what I had mentioned yesterday was the uh, hand signals. Mm. Another thing that we had was just class links and maybe you guys use this as well, that we had just one uh, constant slide that was the class links. They could go in there, here's all your math links, here's your reading links, here's uh, your skills links and your citations links. And a caveat that I would say about all these links is we introduced them one at a time. We didn't <laughs> present links. <laughs> you know, the first day it was a blank slide. So these were, are still to use and we'll present them this year to the kids because we have the three, four, threes are coming up to the fours. So there's still a bunch that we're going to add and there's probably lots more. So we would do that. And then another uh, thing that we had was uh, we created a folder that the kids have the access to add their own uh, folders, uh, clicks on, um, and often kids would do things and would be like, just tag that into cool things because it didn't yeah. fit into math and it didn't fit into language arts. So it would just be cool things. And so who knows, like a lot of kids just wanted to, oh, they put in all these, but there were a lot of actually cool things. Oh, this is all teacher stuff. This is at the end we had these, <laughs> uh, but you know, so kids are just adding their own uh, mm -hmm. thing. And these were not us asking them to do anything. It's just they're all their own uh, haphazard uh, show and tell. Mm -hmm. Some kids were more advantageous about adding things in there. And then uh, that was, yeah, we had the actual show and tell presentations and show and tell was not like, okay, Jimmy's gonna do it this week and then Joey and then Johnny. It was who would like to show anything. And mm. any presentation that they made, we would always put it in there so that uh, people could see, just show things off. And that did actually become authentic. Um, so that's my share about some things that we do beyond repository. Um, to seeing somebody else's class. <laughs> no, I kind of want to copy the video so I can go back through that really slowly. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You have it organized really well. Yeah. Jenna, come on. <laughs> can you show us something? Um, yeah, I'm not sure quite what you're looking for. Uh, my classroom is not very organized, but I can, I can share <laughs> yeah, some, some of the things. If I can share a screen. Yeah, I think I've given that ability, right? Do you have that ability? Uh, disabled. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I'll give you permission. There, are you able but, to? I'm just in my activity library. So I can scroll down a few things. But um, every Monday, I always did a feelings check-in. Mm -hmm. And this is actually just borrowed and like um, updated from some put in Seesaw community. But I found this, like, um, this was not required by school at all, but I really found by um, doing this, the children responded and it increased, I think, their engagement. And I always gave voice feedback. Um, and it, like, let me just know where they were at any given time, like how they were feeling, which is really important, I think. Mm -hmm. And on a Friday, we yeah. would always do a reflection as well. Um, gosh. And are they? Yeah, three for Friday. Um, so they could choose how they wanted to do this. I always did my own example, so I was sort of participating as well. And just, yeah. Loads of stuff. We had we had a format for our timetables, so we were kind kind of um, stuck with how we did that. Let me see if I can actually get this here back to class. So we would have it that was actually linked to our drive, just some information. Yeah, I wish we could use the comments and like everything was Zoom, so they'd have their own like reading groups, things like that. Yeah. Oh, something else I found useful was we use this website called widget i don't know if any of you have heard of that um that's our eal one but for us our spelling words we would sort of um pop in here as well with the thai translation or the chinese translation chinese. or mm -hmm. korean translation and that was really useful for the students as well when you don't always get the opportunity to explain in as much depth but 
Mm. Yeah, those are just some of the things. Uh, Jenna, how do you spell widget? Oh gosh, I think it's W-I-D-G-I-T. Let me just leave. Yeah, W-I-D-G-I-T, widgetonline.com. And it's fabulous. You can make all sorts of things in there, flashcards, or I don't like grids. You can even have um, students type things out and it'll like put the little um, symbol above, like so um, for your really um, early readers or early sort of t English, they'd be able to sort of read back and understand things. It's, it's a great, great site. It is a paid for one though, unfortunately. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, fantastic. And we also like, link, like I like to, because we don't have the community with the comments, a lot of our links would go to Flipgrid or Padlet and mm -hmm. that way they could collaborate um, like ideas or like grammatical structures, things like that. I thought they were really cool and mm -hmm. just linked to Seesaw. Anybody else? I can share. I think I've got a few things similar to Jenna. How do I can I share? Should be down at the bottom screen share. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, um so this is my class, which is kind of um about to be archived. Um, but I think last year when it was more long-term, every Monday morning, I would do a quick Monday morning announcement to family and students and just kind of give a heads up what's happening this week. Um, I would also bring my cat into that video. It was kind of something and then set a, a riddle or something. So, um, and then I would use my kind of cat to check out as well and do a roundup at the end. So Rafi would give a little bit of a, feedback my cat's been very useful in online learning um mm -hmm. and to put out a monday morning my kids are always chomping at the bit to do stuff so i was using these kind of um uh kind of think outside the box so draw alongs can it's not a cloud can they draw that and they really love these think outside the box things or complete the picture and it keeps them busy and um, they come to class them with something to talk about and I'm always amazed what they can come up with. So that's something just to get them going using the tools and stuff. But I found that really useful. Um, we do like weekly tongue twisters, which is great for pronunciation. Um, this is great for their journal as well, because they can go back and challenge themselves and they kind of um, they kind of compete against themselves, which I like and see. So it doesn't, it's not competing against each other, which they sometimes do in the classroom. It's all about their journal I do a um using Padlet every Monday a, a pitch and a peach and pit even so they just have to write a good thing and a bad thing about the weekend so we can talk about that as well um and that's something they love because they get to see everyone's kind of stuff and then they can like it here so that just links through and I just clean the board each each week um so they enjoy that now I love that um yeah, I saw that there's a really good lady on YouTube. I'll put her name in the comments, but she's got some really good stuff for primary. Um, and then one of the things which I've really enjoyed is our Friday flashback. They have this in their homework book and ideally they would write it out in the homework and it could be about any topic. It doesn't have to be my lessons. It can be about the Vietnamese lessons, um, but then they're gonna make a video or recording and explain more about what was their best thing, the worst thing, the hardest thing, and the thing they're most proud of. So I use these like Mr. Men cards. Mm. So Mr. when were you Mr. Bump and kept trying to do something? Uh, Mr. Happy is something you're really proud of. And what lesson did you have to be like Mr. Busy where you have to focus really hard. It took a lot of like concentration. Um, and they do that every Friday as well. So they really enjoy that. Um, and then normally we do like one field trip um, a week and it, that will tie into a reading or our vocabulary or it will be something more by choice library time. So we generally go on a bit of a virtual 
field trip and then try and use part of that for so I have made a few virtual field trips with different um, length of different activities. Some are really short, some are much longer, depending on how busy or how much detail they want to go into. There's one I've done, which it has, it is quite challenging, but I would differentiate it in my instructions. And so maybe I would set it to my high level students and say, go for it. And then I might just say, do part, different parts for some. So they've, they've still got like, I think Thomas was saying that done factor. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done the task. It's not gonna take forever. Yeah. Um, I think everything else is kind of archived, but yeah. Um, but yeah, again, I just, I, I like the fact that they can do some reading out loud and I can actually hear them mm -hmm. reading in a class. I have 25 kids in a class. Um, I teach three classes. It's really hard to get that in the classroom. Um, then they also have the opportunity to, if they can't write it or spell it, they can say it as well. So um, they're allowed to use like multiple different different tools. And then recently we went online before they finished their writing project. And if I'm honest, I wasn't sure how it would work, but it actually worked pretty well because I was able to give really clear instructions, go through the rubric, and then I just broke it into different parts. But they all managed to actually exceed my expectations and typing wasn't too bad either because that's obviously a different skill. Um, but yeah, okay. I feel like I'm talking too much. No, so, right. I'm going to stop. <laughs> One thing that is really good as well is the differentiation part that like you can make one activity mm -hmm. and I love that you can just for your hires just give them it and mm -hmm. then like you know just add in like some scaffolding some keywords some pictures some like you know just whatever and like the voice notes just to really mm -hmm. support other learners I love that about Seesaw because you don't have to do everything again. Mm -hmm. And like menus so I colour code things so I might say do if there's more than multiple pages, do page, do the green page, blue page and yellow page, or just pick two colors or one color. And that's one way to, so they can still get, okay, I've chosen my color and I did it. So they still get that, yes, I've done. And maybe you can guide them to a slightly easier color. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. Or then doing, yeah, again, um, menus where it's spicy, medium and mild as well they get a choice that helps as well. Cool. <laughs> I want I want to uh, if it's okay just share my screen for one more time. And so one of the other things that I found really helpful was uh, when we did the activities was starting to name our activities uh, like FF. 10, FF11, FF, th those were just fun facts. So we had mm -hmm. nothing to do or whatever. And so we had FFs were fun things, OLs were online learning, but we would give them numbers. And that way it was really easy to refer to it later. And it's like, you haven't finished OL38. Uh, rather than you haven't finished the iMovie, adding some music, sound sharing, da 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 da. And so that was just one uh, simple, uh, quick thing that you could do. I wanted to show people this other thing that I just learned, and that was in activities. When you go into add activities and in the community, mm -hmm. if you search these three words, and maybe you're going to be like, I knew that, but one word is just simply badge. And if you search for badge, there's tons of badges already there. Another one is uh, game. There's a lot of games that are already pre-made in there. And then the third one that I thought was really cool was track. And you can find tons of tracking systems and everything that are in there. So uh, those were some things that I had just learned in my gamification video uh, 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 course that I just took. They were in the notes up at the top. Uh, we're in here, yeah, on slide four. Uh, also, uh, the lady was talking about, I wish I knew her name, <laughs> the lady, uh, she was talking about uh, CISA Go. I don't know how many of you know about that, but if we ever do uh, go back face to face, uh, Mary, you probably want to explore this particularly because you can. 
but it's some uh, ways that kids can learn about Seesaw and it's in the classroom, like running around and doing some things. Um, so especially getting kids introduced to it face to face. Seesaw Go was there. There's a link to it on slide four and the link to how it works and everything like that. So it, it's a comprehensive resource that I guess has been around for a long time, but I just heard about it today. I don't really know what it is. I haven't had a lot of time to explore it. So just last year when I was in at school, we had to go to the ICT room to use Seesaw. So I created like, they had their own passport, a Seesaw passport. And each week they got a boarding ticket. So they had like an entrance ticket and they loved that. So we got in the left, we went up, they had their boarding and then I would show them in class what they had to do on Seesaw and there was a few options. And then they went and they got their stamp. So each week it was like, we were going somewhere and they really, really enjoyed enjoyed that. So that was just a gimmick, but it worked, yeah. It is, it's like the whole gamification thing, really, isn't it? It gives them something to sort of challenge themselves. They want to, they want to complete that task, not because it's a lesson, but because, I don't know, it's a different sense of achievement. Mm. Yeah. Glad that you mentioned it again. Yeah, that gamification course that uh, the lady <laughs> ran and had so many ideas. And I thought I knew about gamification, but she was really uh, comprehensive. Uh, if it's okay, I'm going to just share our last slide because we're at 7.06 already. <laughs> we had a lot of sharing. Um, August is next, next Monday. Okay. Sorry, I'm just talking out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see each other less than a week. Uh, discussion. Okay. Uh, before next week, brainstorm ways you can connect families using CSAP family app. And I heard one person actually took that course and ways to get families engaged. So somebody's already ahead of the curve. That was uh, an accident. <laughs> it was the first course that popped up. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> You'll receive a particip participation certificate from CISA. Uh, if you haven't done so already, go to the, the link that's going to be in your email again today at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the link is the only way to access your participation certificate. Um, I went there today and just had a look and uh, it, it does update. So what you can fill in yesterday, uh, you can fill in up to today, but the other two are not open yet until like next week and then sometime after that. So you do need to keep clicking on the link. Mm -hmm. You can't keep going, fill it in and it's all done. So there's another email coming today at 7.30 that gives you that link again. Um, and if it's okay, Ark, I will share today's meeting with you again. Were you able to get uh, access to that video? Uh, I haven't been able to try today, sorry, but I'm, I'm going to try now. Yeah, after this. Okay. Can you share it with me as well, please? Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I want to go through slowly, like Heidi said. Yeah, yeah. can we all yeah. just get the link? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see all. I'm going to steal. I can't, I've written notes, but I don't think I've got everything. So. Okay, well, I'm glad that people are going. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. A lot. Good. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. And do again, please add into the Seesaw Connect Google Doc because we can go back in there. And I like to I like to work asynchronously, thinking at three o'clock in the morning by myself, going, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll add this in." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that, that's how I work. But thank you again. Uh, thank you. Are there any others? Otherwise, we'll see each other at six o'clock on August second, which is a Monday. Perfect. But well, that's our first day of school. My first oh, day. Oh, good luck. Oh, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we, we, we're, we're like going through a lot of training yesterday and today and preparing for, you know, next week. Wow. So, so wait, that's your first day of school with kids? Um, I There's no definite um, yet, but we're thinking it's going to be online because of the COVID situations happening. Right. So it's right. going to be online. Yeah. Okay, so that's with, kids, with kids because this week with teachers, so yeah. Oh, wow, that's fast. Yeah, that's intense. Okay, well then, everybody, <laughs> I'll share yesterday's and I'll share today's meeting with everybody then. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.